Thank you very much. We timed that just correctly. <sighs> Sorry, we had a little technical difficulty earlier, and, and uh, so, but we straightened that out with your help. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a good thing that I went to the Juilliard Jew School of uh, tambourine playing, and uh, as you could tell, and uh, so I was really grateful. Uh, you know, uh, Gary said, man, we're going to do that one more time before, uh, before the new music minister comes. I said, boy, I'd be up for it. I love it. So I appreciate you tolerating that. We may have a uh, call to meeting afterwards to get rid of this guy. Get somebody in here. Hey, listen, uh, find your Bible, find a Bible, turn to Matthew chapter 11, Matthew chapter 11, and I want us to look at these very familiar few verses of Scripture. Uh, Matthew 11, 28, 29, and 30. These are going to resonate with you, and I want, it, I want, you, to, uh, I want you to soak these in uh, this Labor Day weekend, because uh, listen to this, these expressions, I'm... I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted. Uh, I, I, I'm running on. I'm running on fumes. I, I'm drained. I, I'm, I'm stressed to the max. I, I'm stressed out. I'm, I'm completely stressed out. I, I, I'm on the edge of burnout. Now, how many of us have either said that or heard somebody have said that? Come on. I mean, people are saying that all the time. We hear it all the time. We've even uh, said that, and that's because, you know, uh, we understand these words. We live in this fast-paced, crazy world, and uh, it's, it's always going 24-7, and we're always on the move. Um, we, we're becoming overachievers. Uh, we are hurrying, we're rushing from one place to the other, we're working extremely hard, our energy is often depleted, and we're at the raggedy edge of ourselves. And that's the truth. And so we say those kinds of things. I just don't, I, I can't handle one more thing. And it, and it reminded me of, a, a, of this a story out of Tacoma, Washington, about a, a, about a basset hound named Tattoo. Now, Tattoo, and y'all know about it, I had a basset hound once when I was a kid, and uh, Tattoo was not planning to go for a run that evening. But his owner accidentally shut Tattoo's leash in the passenger so side door at the back of the, back of the, you know, and so he got in and he cranked the car and he's going down the road. A, a motorcycle officer named Terry Filbert passed by. He thought something was being dragged on the other side of the car. And so he turned around, he caught up, with, but it wasn't anything being dragged. It was, it was Tattoo the hound dog. And Tattoo, he said, Tattoo was putting his paws up and down, and he was going. He said he clocked that dog running between 20 and 25 miles an hour. Have you ever seen a basset hound run? Man, I'm telling you, it's not a pretty sight. The ears are just going, and they're just amazing. So he, he, he pulled, him, pulled him over and saved, saved Tattoo. Man, sometimes we feel like that. We feel like we have been tied to something we didn't want to be tied to. We feel like we're going a lot faster than we ever intended to, to go, and that's the, way, that's the way it is. Then we come to this, this passage. And we find in here not only an invitation from Jesus, but we also find a promise from Jesus. So we are receiving an invitation and a promise from Jesus for us today who feel like we have been leashed to something, tied to something, we've been pulled along, and we need a word from the Lord. And I'm telling you, if you've been worn out, you need a word from the Lord. And so I'm going to read this. I'm going to pause. Dramatic. There'll be a dramatic pause, and you fill in the blank with some gusto, okay? This is the word of the Lord. Come to me, all you who are weary and, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. I want to talk about that in just a moment. There's a couple of words that just stand out immediately. One is the word weary, weary. Uh, maybe this will resonate with many of us. This is your typical college student about mid-October, right here. About mid-October. 
You know, I looked up, I just did some images, some Google images of weary, I found weary animals, I found weary college students, weary parents, weary church folk, I mean, I just, oh, and, and so I just let this guy sort of represent weary. When it comes to the word weary here, where Jesus says, you know, come to me, all you who are weary, what he's talking about is a condition, it's a growing, ongoing weariness, a tired exhaustion, a, a, from toil, a burdens of life, or a, a, a grief, or a loneliness, or pressure, a weariness in the effort of doing and doing, and on and on. So that's, that's the word that's associated. Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary. Then the other word is the word burdened. Burdened, okay? And the word burdened here is where you're just overloaded. Overloaded. Now, there's all kinds of things that could be said to this picture, I know. It can be really a lot can be said to this, but, uh, but you know, you just see, you see this mule is just up in the air, it's going nowhere. And just absolutely overwhelmed, overwhelmed. Well, there are folks that are just absolutely overwhelmed. It may very well be that the context of this passage, who Jesus is talking to, are people that want a connection with God. And there are those in the religious community, those leaders that are making it so hard, making it so difficult, that they can't even get to God. And they're, they're, they're weary and they're burdened down because as much as they want to, they're just, they're just this continual loading up of rules and regulations and they can't seem to get it right, can't seem to get to God. Well, for us, metaphorically, it can apply to a lot of things in our lives where we're just overwhelmed, overburdened, and sometimes people are just piling on until we're just up in the air. And it's just like, here we are. What are we going to do? And that's what I love about, if you're looking at your passage, the last part of verse 29. You see that? Last part. Jesus is talking to people who are weary, weary and burdened, heavy laden, and he gives them a promise of rest. I will come to me and I will give you rest for your souls. You know what he's talking about? He's talking about breathing. The word soul, soul, He's talking about breathing, breathing. He's talking about receiving into your life the life force of the living God. That's what he's talking about. And it goes all the way back to the, to the creation story of Adam in the book of Genesis. It says that God wanted to do something. He took clay and it, the dust of the earth and he, and he fashioned and formed it into a, in, into a man. But that, that, that clay was not brought to life. And sometimes that's the way we feel. We just feel like a lump of dirt. feel like a lump of clay. We're just sort of worn down, worn out. And God, we're told that God breathed, breathed life, breathed life into him. He became a living soul. Sometimes we just come along and we're absolutely just worn out, worn down, can't Move. What we need is the breath of God. And that's what Jesus is promising us. Come to me, all you who are weary, worn down, and are burdened and heavy laden, and I will bring life into you. You know, a pastor was talking to this lady, and she had faced so many things in her life, so many things, and he was just being honest. He said, what can you do when you face trouble after trouble after trouble after trouble? What can you do? And she looked at him. She said, Pastor, you can breathe. You can breathe in and exhale out. And then she went on to talk about what that was, how, how, how it resonated in her life and how it should resonate with us and it did for him. We all need to exhale some things. We need to exhale some anxieties and some worries and some stress on our life. We need to exhale it. And we need to wait and breathe in Jesus' promise, uh, his promised work into our lives. We need to inhale his way and breathe deeply his life into our insides. We need to exhale the toxins and inhale spiritual life. Hey, why don't we do that? Why don't we do that right now? Because remember we're talking about Sabbath. 
One of the things that God provides for us is rest, Sabbath, right? We need Sabbath. Sabbath is just breathing in and exhaling out. It's just taking a breath. So let's, let's do it. It's, it's, it may be a little dangerous, but I'm going to ask you to do something with me, okay? I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to ask you to do something. Take, take some time to rest. And this is what I, I hope that we'll do. I, I hope we'll allow the words of Jesus to sink inside, uh, inside okay? So, so get comfortable. I said this would be dangerous. Get comfortable. No, lay down in your pew. Don't do that. That's not the comfortable I'm talking about. But get comfortable, okay? Just, just relax just a minute. Some of you do not look relaxed. Just relax, just a minute. Get comfortable. Are you comfortable? That's what I thought. You're not comfortable. Get com what does that mean? Get comfortable. Just, just get comfortable. Okay? Close your eyes. <laughs> Close your eyes. Don't look at me. Close your eyes. And rest. Ready? Inhale. Breathe in his goodness. Breathe in his spirit. Bring in his love, his comfort. Exhale. Exhale is stress. Inhale. Breathe in life in the spirit. Exhale. Anxieties and worries. Inhale. Spiritual oxygen. Exhale. Toxins and bitterness and fear and loneliness. Breathe it out. And hear Jesus say, Come to me, and I will give you rest. All right? Wake up your neighbor <laughs> and say amen. Wake up your neighbor and say amen. Now, I'll tell you, here's the thing. We just don't do that in our lives. We don't do that enough. And we need that. We need to do something with what's built up inside of us. We need to... We need to breathe some things in. We need to breathe some things out of our life. We need to find that in Sabbath. And by the way, when it came to talking about rest, Jesus knew what he was talking about. Jesus was speaking from his own experience. His own experience. He's talking about his own life. When it, when he's, I mean, he is busy. He's out healing and and, and bringing forgiveness and restoration. He's encouraging people. He is bringing courage to people. He is offering hope and he is offering life. And never do you ever see Jesus ever turning anyone away. But those moments when it would begin to weigh on him, his physical body would feel it and his spirit would feel drained. He would find that moment, that, moment, that time where he would isolate himself, he would, he would soak in, he would bring in, he would rejuvenate, pray, and rest. Then he's ready, he's off. Listen, there's no not going to come up here, but there are, there are five, five particular verses of Scripture or Scripture references that really allude to our resting in the Lord. So just jot these down. You can look at them as you, uh, uh, later on. I'm just going gonna, gonna to say them, and then you can jot them down and keep them close to you. One of them is Galatians 6, 9. Write that down, Galatians 6, 9. And this is what Paul says. He says, Let us not grow weary in doing good, in well-doing, for in due season we will reap if we don't, if we don't quit. Hang in there. Rest, trust. First Peter five seven. I love first Peter five seven. First Peter five seven says that we can cast, we can hurl all our anxieties onto him because he cares for us. Is that true? We know that by experience. How about Proverbs three twenty four? If you're not resting well at night, this is what it says. Proverbs 3.24, if you lie down, you will not be afraid. The whole passage talking about trusting in him. You will lie down and your sleep will be sweet. Rest. Sometimes you just have to put your head on the pillow and just think, soak in the Lord and say, Lord, I need to rest in you tonight. How about John 14.27? 
wonderful verse of scripture. Jesus is speaking these words. This is a, some of the last moments he will have before his crucifixion. Peace I, li- I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Those four verses. And then this one. This passage that we're talking about today that says, Come to me, all you who are what? Weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. I will breathe life into you. And then he says in here, Take my yoke, my yoke, upon you. Okay? My yoke. Mm. Okay? I, I wonder if there's a couple of young men that want to come up and help me to illustrate this. A yoke. Oh, there's one. Oh, yeah, come on up. Good, good. Young men, come up here. You don't mind? Help Pastor Jack with this. Because, you know, they were talking about a farming community. They understood. I've never held a yoke before. This is no yoke. This is no yoke. I've never held one before. Okay, now. Now, boys, let's... Let, Let's, let's put it on. No, 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 no. Put it, put it on. Boys, get it underneath there. Right, there you go. Now, now Jesus was saying, so this is one of us to be like Jesus be on one side, and he says, take my yoke upon you, okay? Now, I didn't know that they had these things, okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. And so, so they were, I don't know if this is the right thing here. Golly. Oh, wait, hold on to it. Hold on to it. Push down. And then they had, oh, there you go. You think All you right. can handle this there you go, just like that. If I can, yeah. All right, they got it? All right, then we'll see here. Let's right, see if I can. All right, hang on, to it. hang on to it. Hang on to it. There you go. Now, and then they have these pins, and the pins go in here. All right. Now, now sometimes folks feel yoked. Listen, you're yoked to something. You're yoked to something. You're working for somebody. And people are burdened and wearied because of it. Y'all doing okay? Yeah, pretty good. All right. Somebody want to take a picture? I'd love to get this on Facebook. We can tweet it right now if you're hurry. We can tweet it. We can get it out there. They're not going anywhere. Uh, but don't, don't, don't do it. Not without permission. Can we get permission to tweet it? Listen, when I, what I want you to do is I want you to get a visual picture. Let's say that you come along and you're burdened and you're weary and there's a lot going on. Look straight up. And there's a lot going on in life. And Jesus says, come take my yoke upon you. Whose yoke is it? Whose yoke is it? It's his. He's saying, connect. Uh-oh, there you go. No. <laughs> All right, there you go. Good, good. You're doing great. You're great. All right, just going out live right now. Now, now, now listen. I want you to see this picture right here. I want you to keep this in your mind because I'm not going to have them up here all through the rest of the message. But I want you to see this, okay? This yoke, this yoke, he says, this is, come take my yoke upon you. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. And what it's talking about is on Jesus' side, he would carry the heavier load. I want to talk about that just a minute. Can y'all get that? Let's see if we can get this off of you. And then y'all put it down on that front pew for me, would you please? Good heavens, thank you. Don't drop it. There you go. Give him a hand. Tell him thank you very much. Wow. Hey, that worked out all right. I'm glad. No, there's no one injured in the message today. See? What about after the message? After the message, yeah, well, you'll get your pay. <laughs> one day. Listen, y'all keep that visual in mind. Because you have people that Jesus is talking to, they are weary and worn out. They're burdened down. He says, come to me. That's the invitation. You know, one of the things is we just don't, we, we carry stuff around. We hold on to it. Why do we do that? Why do we, why do we burden ourselves? Why do we carry those things around? Why do we do that? Hey, come to me. I got a deal for you. I got a deal for you. Come to me and I will give you rest. Well, the part of that is, is that we are being yoked with Jesus. And when he says in there, come and, and learn from me. So the whole, the whole thing is about learning from him. And I, I want to talk about just very quickly three things I think we learn as we yoke ourselves to Jesus. Okay? 
One is he connects us, he connects with us through relationship. You know, remember these two young men here, they're yoked together and, and they're doing work. If, we, if it's his yoke, then we're doing his work and whatever we're doing is for the Lord. And he connects with us through relationship because if you're on one side, where is the Lord? He's, he's right there. So you think in terms, you think proximity. You think fellowship. Uh, you, you think in closeness. You think in priority. He's right there. And the Bible tells us he's, a, he's like, a, he's like a, a, a friend that sticks closer than a brother. He never leaves us nor forsakes us. He is with us in the midst of our difficulties, our trials, and our heartache, and our suffering, our work, or whatever we are engaged in. Where is he? He's right there. And that ought to cheer our hearts. And when he's right there in that proximity, that means there's relationship. Maybe this whole thing, this imagery is that he is calling us to spend time with him. That is true Sabbath, is spending time with him and allowing him to breathe into our lives. He's in our proximity. I, I wrote this down because I, somebody wrote it and I went, this, that, that's, this is brilliant. Every time I get detached from Jesus Christ, my stress level goes up. Every time I get reattached to Jesus Christ, my stress level goes down. That's brilliant. Now, how do you build a relationship with somebody? You've got to be in proximity. You've got to be close. You've got to listen, learn. There's a lot that's going on in that imagery. Here's the second thing. Second thing. So he connects with us through relationship. That's what the yoke is about. Second thing, he connects his strength with our weakness. You know what? Whatever it is that we are facing, whatever burden we're facing, he's there to help us with it. That's what I love about this imagery. If you don't have that wooden yoke, it's about him putting his arm around us and lifting us up. It's about him taking the heavier portion. It is connecting his strength with our weakness. No longer is it just one working, but there's two working. And are we glad that he doesn't just do away with our burdens sometimes? Sometimes he does, but, but often he allows us to carry that burden so that we'll call upon him to come and help, Lord, help, Lord. And, we, and he comes alongside in that moment, and there's that sweet fellowship, and he is helping us to carry. We say, Lord, I can't do it. He said, I know, but I can. Is there anything the Lord can't do? Is there any mountain he can't move? Is there any enemy he can't defeat? No. So he carries a load. I love, listen, Psalm 55, 22 says, Pile your troubles on God's shoulders. He'll carry your load and he'll help you out. Isn't that great? Now listen, what I love about this picture of being yoked to Jesus, his yoke, take, take on his yoke, his, it's, it's easy, his burden is light. I, I love that. Uh, what, what we're doing is, is we're coming into that context where he is breathing his life into us. He is breathing himself into us. He is helping us and strengthening us. He's building relationship with us. And then we bring our burdens to him and he says, I, I got this, I, I, I got it. And then, and then in that proximity, there is this release. There's this release, giving it to the Lord. How many times have we had a burden, had something come up, and we continued to carry it on and on? And then, and, then it's, and then you say, okay, Lord, I give it to you, I give it to you. And then a little bit later, you got it again, you got it again. And I say, I give it to you, I give it to you. I mean, have you ever done that? Yeah. Uh, we, we, often, we often do that. So what he is calling us to do is to come into that context he will share that load with us, and we can release that to him. What, what do we need to, to release to him? What about the stress and the pressures? What about the inner obstacles that block, block us and, and, and who we're to be? What, what about that? What about the, the heartache, the pain, the, the sorrow, the loneliness? What, what is it? May he comes into our, our context and helps us. 
And when I see this, it says he, he connects, connects his strength with our weakness. I think that he's also telling us to sing that little song. Let it go, let it go. That's all the song I know. Let it go, let it go, let it go. Well, that's all we need to know is let it go. Why do we hold on to those things? He says, I know your weakness, but I've got strength. You know, I, uh, I grew up with an older brother. And I'd go, I would go, and we had, uh, we had these kids, that neighbor kids, and they were mean. Boy, they were mean. And they were bigger than me and liked to pick on me. And sometimes I initiated some things. I mean, I, you know. But my brother would show up. He'd take care of me. That's what Jesus does for us. He says, I love you with an everlasting love. He tells, we're told, David says, because your love is better than life, my lips shall glorify you. He tells us that we are, who are seeking him, are surrounded by his unfailing love. And uh, we're affected by that. Now, I don't know how that speaks to all of us, but I'm hoping that we're all learning today there's something that he can handle that we need to trust him with. Then here's the other thing. You think of that imagery, you know, the imagery of the two yoked together. This is the other thing. He connects us to his character. Because if you look at that passage, he says that, you know, he says that he is, he is meek and, uh, or, or lowly of heart. Uh, he is humble. Now, those are the things that he is declaring to us. So he says, come and connect yourself with me and learn from me. Learn what my character is. And I think that it's about pouring himself into us. It's hard to be in that context with somebody and, they, and them not rub off on us. So maybe it's about his care for us, but just maybe it's about what we learn when we are yoked to him. It's about being the kind of disciple that reflects who he is. It's, a, it's about this river of life flowing up in us like a mighty well. Uh, it it gush, gushes forth. It is the abundant life. It is the fruit of the Spirit. It is the divine nature of God that is at work in us through the working of the Holy Spirit. So we need that, that context. We, we, we need his strength. We, we, we need his character. So he says, strap on my yoke, and let's go together. Rest. Breathe. Exhale. I had the most interesting text that came to me. It came at 7.20 in the morning. My son lives, uh, you know, just uh, south of Dallas, somewhere over there. And he texted me. This is what he texted me. He says, uh, we just had an earthquake. Very unsettling. A magnitude 5.6 earthquake northwest of Pawnee, Oklahoma shook all the way down to the south side of Dallas. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Oklahoma, an earthquake! Well, I guess apparently they have those there. And it resonated. Well, you can't help but just think. I, I've listened to people on the news and different ones and people, what people have said and they talk about, you know, talk about their surprises kind of thing. Let me tell you something. The earth is shaking. 
but we can put our feet on a foundation and be firmly secure because our foundation is never shaken. Maybe that's what Jesus is saying to us. We're harassed, we're hurried, we're worn out, but this is what he says. Come to me. That's his invitation. Maybe today it is you find a need to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That's what this invitation is about. Come to me. Maybe, maybe what resonates is he is speaking to each of us in some way. Some of us, man, on the Richter scale, we are up to here. And he says, yeah, but I can take care of that. Maybe it's just metaphorically, maybe it is physically coming and kneeling at these steps we call an altar and just, just metaphorically laying something down and saying, I'm not going to drag this thing around anymore. I'm going to trust your strength. I'm going to seek your wisdom. I'm going to let you defeat. I'm going to let you overcome. I'm going to let you move. But I can't breathe anymore. And let him breathe in. Breathe in. Soul. Become alive. That's what he wants. He wants us to come in into this good place, a safe place, a place for the weary and the burdened, and leave from here alive. 